The focus of debate here on Parliament Hill on day one, very much where it was even a few mon months ago, pardon me, on the cost of living crisis fa facing Canadians. So what are the various parties prepared to do? What are they advocating for to address that cost of living crisis? Steve McKinnon is the government's house leader. Hi, Minister. Good to see you again. Thank you. I appreciate you making the time today on, on the first day. Um, I wanted to ask about your approach going into this sitting and if you intended to focus more on the opposition than on new measures to help Canadians who are struggling with the cost of living crisis. We intend to outline the measures that we've taken and the measures that we will take in terms of achieving better affordability for Canadians, help for putting the groceries on the table, better and lower and more accessible housing. So we're going to focus uh, an awful lot of that, but we're going to point out the contradictions uh, and the vagueness that the opposition has shown when it comes to what their plan is for Canadians. Today there was a lot more of the latter than the former, though. All I heard, for example, from the ministers who were tasked with giving a press conference on your economic measures was that you intend to implement what you announced two months ago in the fall economic statement. The primary measures in that fall economic statement that were aimed at addressing affordability don't even come into effect until 2025. How does that help people deal with affordability right now? What you also heard of today was a brand new initiative to ensure better housing and more accessible and more housing for students, for example. Again, so, in the long run. So again, but a plank and, and, and as we've discussed many times, yeah, just because something takes a while doesn't mean you don't implement good policy. What you've seen is a series of good policy measures that are going to get prices down for Canadians, that are going to build more homes, that are going to change the way that cities deal with housing, and it's going to help put can, uh, Canadians put groceries in the fridge and on the table. But as we talked about before, for example, around housing, and even today, and the reason I bring it up again is because of both you talking about the fall economic statement Friday, I believe it was, and the Minister of Finance today. I mean, the primary things that you set out in that may be very valid policy, may be worthwhile policy, but they don't even kick in from a budgetary perspective until 2025, perhaps even after the next election. So are you trying to sort of falsely convince Canadians that you're acting in their interests around affordability in the immediacy when, when you, you know, those, again, those policies could be valid, but they don't help right now. I don't accept that all of this stuff is delayed. What, first of all, there have been a series of measures over a period of many years now through budgets and fall economic statements that are going to have the direct uh, result of lowering costs for Canadians, of making things more affordable, making housing more plentiful and more accessible for Canadians. So. Uh, we are, we're going to continue to put measures in place. Yes, some of them will have some kind of implementation, implementation uh, lead up. Others will have more immediate effect. We took the GST, for example, off psychotherapy. So uh, a, a mental health initiative that will uh, be very, very helpful for people. You can see in all kinds of ways this government putting in place measures that are going to make life easier for people all across this country. What you're not seeing is a plan. In fact, you've got more base slogans from Mr. Polyev today and from the opposition. You've got no semblance of a plan uh, in terms of helping Canadians in their day-to-day -day life. Just vitriol, invective, and a lot of uh, uh, empty platitudes. But the, the you know, Mr. Scheer will be on your, your counterpart from the Conservatives. I'll have the opportunity to ask him about the kinds of things the Conservatives would do or the, what you're accusing them of not doing. Let's take the example of the price of grocery prices, right? And we've talked about this before, but you're saying that your government is doing things to help lower the price. What are those things? Because even asking the Competition Bureau to more closely study, for example, the level of competition or strengthening the laws around it, have not, that has not materialized yet in additional competition, nor lower prices. Mm -hmm. uh, but you, what you're also seeing is a full-on, we had a grocery rebate. We had for low-income earners a GST uh, enhanced rebate. We had a series of measures thing, the at, the peak of, at the peak of uh, the inflationary uh, cycle, which is coming down now, not, not far enough, but it is coming down. You've seen a series of measures that have been put in place to help Canadians. What also helps, helps Canadians? Child care costs. The Canada Child Benefit, thousands of dollars. Uh, per child for Canadian families. So these things that Mr. Polyev would cut because he says he's going to cut what he calls inflationary spending, he will cut these things. How will that help Canadians put groceries on the table? How will it help Canadians put groceries on the table when he's taking away the, a child care program that is designed to get child care expenses down to $10 a day? He hasn't these are said things that he's that going to do that, to be fair yet. Yeah, well, I've asked the question. They say that they're going to talk about that stuff in the next campaign. I understand while you're raising it, well, but you're accusing acceptable. them of taking it all away. That well, hasn't, they haven't confirmed that will be the case. When you say you're going to cut inflationary spending, that means you're going to cut 
cut government spending. You're going to cut programs, services that Canadians have become accustomed to. Dental care. You ask about other affordability measures. You know, dental care is something they voted against. This is helping Canadians now, as we speak. Not in 2025, not on a long implementation pr uh, process. There are people getting letters in the mail today uh, where they can sign up and become eligible for dental care in Canada. These are a series of things that until Mr. Polyev comes clean with what he's going to cut, uh, we are uh, absolutely within our rights to point out that he's going to be increasing the cost for Canadians. The substance of my question though wasn't about what the opposition might or, or might not do. It's about tangibly what can help grocery prices go down or just be stable, which is a word that your government employed prior to Thanksgiving last year, in which you said, if they're not stabilized, and the finance minister told me directly, that means they'll stop going up, that there will be something in store, perhaps a tax is one of the things your government threatened, for the grocers. They those prices continue to go up, above headline inflation, 4.7% compared to 34 in December, and yet, what has your government done to the grocers? Nothing. This is something, there's a suite of policy options available to the minister and to the government, and I know this is something we are following extremely closely. We're tracking the impact of Canadians on increased food costs. We know that is a problem. We know that uh, food inflation is still tracking above what's called headline inflation or the, or the basic inflation rate. So we're going to keep a, a very, very close eye on, on that, and you can be sure that affordability and those measures that will realistically help Canadians in the short term with food costs, we will be exploring them all. With great respect, what does keeping an eye on food prices do for Canadians who cannot buy them right now? Well, let me give you an example. Uh, you know, uh, um, the agriculture minister has a series of measures, whether it's in the dairy industry, whether it's in grains, whether it's in, uh, in climate change adaptation, a series of measures that will help modernize our farming industry and our agriculture and uh, agri-food industry. Some uh, um, dairy-related uh, industries in my riding have benefited from that. That too is a way to make sure Canadians innovate better in terms of agriculture and food and food prices and that makes us a, a more competitive nation when it comes to agriculture and exports and uh, indeed with supplying food for Canadians. Do I interpret from that that you don't plan to force the grocers to do anything? I, you should interpret from that that we're watching every day the impact on the daily lives of Canadians of grocery prices and that there's a minister who's going to be watching that and I'm going to let him uh, fill you in as, uh, as developments arise. Is an excess profit tax still on the table? I'm going to again defer to the ministers who are responsible for deliberating and announcing those things and, and uh, you know whether or not whatever it is they might be considering uh, you should ask them that directly. Okay um, just before I let you go Minister I wanted to ask about a report in the Star today that your government is going to rebrand the price mm -hmm. on carbon and in particular the rebate that is available to Canadians. Is that going to happen? Well you know eight out of ten Canadians benefit, get more money in a carbon rebate than uh, in those provinces where the federal price applies. The eight out of 10 families benefit. Uh, when Mr. Polyev says ax the tax, that means eight out of 10 Canadian families who are now uh, in that program will be harmed. So Mr. Polyev has a lot of answering to do in terms of uh, what is going to be the direct dollar impact, how much? is he going to cut from those households. Now, uh, in terms of how uh, well understood, I think the Minister of the Environment and others have been very, very clear. It's easy to say, ax the tax. What isn't easy to say, and what Polyev has, uh, Mr. Polyev has found it very hard to say, is what is your climate change program? When we put forward a climate change program, it's explained, yes, it takes several sentences to explain that. So, of course, they're always looking for ways to more uh, clearly and better explain uh, the impact on, on real day-to-day Canadian life of, uh, of our climate change policies, but you can be very sure that we will uh, be uh, coming forward with whatever uh, those deliberations are in due course. To be fair though, Minister, what the Auditor General, the em environmental aspect of the office has pointed out very recently is that the majority of your climate policy plan, including the price on carbon, does not specifically, you, your government has not specifically attached to it or shown Canadians to what degree it will impact or reduce carbon emissions. You not actually said, this is what the carbon tax will effectively do and this is the measure by which we will uh, you know stack the program up don't you have to be more clear with Canadians about why there is this tax in the first place we're the first Canadian government to have measurable targets 
uh, in terms of reducing greenhouse gas emissions. We've, we've established milestones and reporting on those milestones. And I think any uh, environmental or climate change expert would agree that indeed one of the more conservative market signals uh, uh, methods of reducing greenhouse gas emissions is indeed a price on pollution, a price on carbon. What we have done in this government is apply a rebate to that, to give in advance back to Canadians that money that they but would spend on that. But you are answering why you haven't said what so, the carbon so tax is So that they may do. make better choices uh, and, and reduce their carbon imprint if possible and keep the money, keep the money in their pocket. And what uh, the parliamentary budget officer has said is eight out of ten Canadians get more money then they p would pay into the system. So but That's not an answer to the question of why you haven't laid out for Canadians how effective you think this carbon tax is going to be, why it's necessary. Well, it's part of a mix of things. As you know, we have clean fuel regulations, an entire series of measures. We've signed up for the Paris Accord. Canada's taken the lead on this issue. We have an obligation to take the lead on this issue. We're going to continue to take the lead on this issue. Uh, price on pollution, uh, for consumers, a price on pollution for high emitters. All of these things are part of uh, a, a policy mix that's going to get us to those P Paris targets. But yes, put more money in Canadians' pockets at the same time. Okay, I'm going to leave it there, Minister. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you. Thank you for having me.